Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be part two in my hi-fi speaker build. We're going to talk some more about some design choices. Uh, after the last seri video series, we left it off. We had picked some components and set out some design goals and limitations. So now with those choices, we're going to actually start making some that into a real design that we can actually physically build. So first, we need to start, we need really two things. We need to determine our box dimensions. I've already determined I'm going to go with a two-way box. It's going to be a bookshelf sized design. And then the crossover is going to be uh, probably a more simple two-way because I'm going to have a one tweeter, one woofer, and I'm probably going to go for like a second order crossover. That's going to be somewhat simple. So uh, to determine the size of the box, I'm going to use this program called WinISD. And I'm just focusing on the Kirby Meets Audio guide. And if you go to this website, linearteam.org, download the latest version, you install that guy, and you get this. So uh, this is pretty excellent. going to help us generate some... I'm going to need a cubic feet number, which is going to be the internal volume of my enclosure. So next, I've got my two speakers that I'm using. This is my woofer, and this is my tweeter. And Dayton Audio is nice because uh, you can download both the specifications and the graphs FRD ZMA data file for both of these. So I have downloaded those and am good to go with that. So now that we've got all that basic information, we need to implement these into the driver database. These uh, Dayton Audio drivers I do not believe are here. If I start trying to make a new project and I look to find... Dayton Audio, you can see there's nothing here. So uh, I'm going to press Add New, and we're going to start making some some speakers. So uh, I'm going to open up. Okay, I've got both of my. These are the speaker specifications for both my woofer and my tweeter. So we're going to start with the woofer, and we're just going to start entering this information in to WinISD. So now I've got both of my drivers inputted, and I can go ahead and start selecting them. Start with the woofer. We are going to do a vented enclosure. We're going to do a Chevy Chev. And we're going to call this YouTube Desktop Build. Okay, so now that I've got this inputted, I can start messing around with, you can see it already gives me um, a box, but I'm going to mess around with some of this stuff a little bit. We're going to do one vent. For vent diameter, we're going to use a two-inch port. I'm going to bump this up a little bit to five watts, just in case we are... And that to 60 hertz. Change this to feet cubed. So that I got the same information running this again the second time. So I've inputted my woofer. I, I don't believe that you need to put in the uh, tweeter as well, even though I did get that ready to go. I think for this, the woofer is all I need. Now, uh, I tuned it to 60 hertz. Like I said, it might be nice to get it all the way down a little bit deeper, but for my purposes, I think that's going to be sufficient, and then maybe I can add an external subwoofer later. I'm going to have one vent. It's going to be a 2-inch round adjustable port. 
and that comes out to 6.16 inches in length. I increased my signal power up here to 5 watts to match the maximum output of my tube amp. And that gives me a box with a cubic feet measurement of 0 0.307. So that's really the critical number that I need. Okay, so if I go back, now I've got my box dimensions. So now I'm going to go to this website, the 12 volt.com, and this has a box length calculator. And so what I started doing is messing around with um, different parameters to just kind of see where, you know, so, so for example, if I do 9 inches wide, 8 inches tall, 13 inches front to back with 0.75 inch thick lumber, that gives me 0.32. So I need to bump that down a little bit. Okay, so this is pretty close. Now, um, I got to remember I'm going to have a 6 inch woofer. And so I'm going to have 6 inches... I'm kind of thinking that this width is going to be a little bit too narrow. So we're going to maybe try this instead. And yeah, that should be about right. There we go. So this is kind of some box dimensions that looks pretty good to me and pretty close again to the, um, the, the, the interior cubic feet volume that I need. We'll give, if I use uh, box dimensions with these measurements, that's going to give me exactly what I'm looking for. So, now I've got my box dimensions. Excellent. Now, let's talk about crossover. So, in order to uh, build my crossover, I use a program called XSIM, this free crossover designer. And... So you can go to this website here and download and, and go through the data. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, guys, now we're starting to look at using XSIM to create our crossover design. Now, if you recall, I had directed you to download some information from the website, this right here. This graphs FRD ZMA data file for both of our two speakers. So we've downloaded those. That's this zip file here and here. So we're going to double click. We're going to hit extract all. Hit extract. I've already done this and that's going to give you these two fo folders right here. That contains all of our information that we're going to use in XSIM. So now that we have installed XSIM, let's go ahead and create a mockup. So I'm going to click on driver here on the left. I'm going to place it right over here on this side. And we're going to right click and we're going to click tune. Okay, we're going to call this our tweeter. And then we need to find the FRD and the ZMA. Then we're going to add another driver, put it down here, hit tune. And this is going to be our woofer. Okay, this is our woofer information. We're going to get our FRD file. We're going to get our ZMA file. Close. Okay, so now we're going to ground here, ground here, and we're going to ground right here. So now if we just draw some lines as if we just connected these speakers with bare wire. You can see it kind of produces a pretty crazy graph here that doesn't look so good, especially in this upper range. It definitely gets pretty weird. I'd bring this down a little bit so I can take a look at some of the lower frequency information. So this S1, that's our, this, this red line is giving us the information just for this S1. S2 is giving an orange line for this woofer. And then the blue is our system. So now I want to start introducing some 
components. So I'm going to, I've already kind of gone through this a little bit, but I've got, I want to do a basic two-way design. And I'll show you guys what I came up with before. This was the design that I came up with before. So we did a capacitor, a new inductor, and then an inductor, a new capacitor. So basically we're just creating, if you follow me from any of my amp stuff, we're just creating low-pass filters and high-pass filters. Okay, that's better. So now if you see with my orange line, you can see this cutoff is happening. That means I've got a high-pass filter that's kind of about this 2K range. So now let's go ahead down here at the bottom, and let's finish connecting our circuit here for the woofer. We'll add a ground, and you can see it starts to shave off this orange line. So then my blue line is looking a lot better because this transfer point between the orange and the red. All right, so basically from here, it's just a matter of playing around with these values. If you right click and press tune, you can bump these up and down. And I think it's, yeah, it just takes a little bit of trial and error to get this curve to be, you know, somewhat as smooth as possible. Now I've got a really simple two-way second-order design going on here, and I'm okay with that. So, um, yeah, if you guys know more about this, you want to chime in on maybe some things I could look at changing, please let me know. But so far, this is the crossover design I've got, and this is what I'm going to go with. So, uh, yeah, now we've got all of our design choices made. We can go ahead with the build.